You know, I don't say it a whole lot, but I would like to say it in this video because I know that I've said some things that are difficult, you know, to digest. And my heart is for revival, and my heart is that God's people repent of their worldliness. But I want you to know something. Jesus loves you. He does. We had earthly parents that disciplined us and guided us. But we understood that they loved us to the best of their ability. We serve a God that loves us more than our parents could ever love us. And that God will discipline us. If you have the type of religion that allows you to live any way you want to live, after all, we, church, we choose the church that is comfortable for us. You really shouldn't choose a church that's comfortable for you. You should choose a church that, one, has the vision and the heart after God. Two, that causes you to enter into the fullness of God, even if that means that you live a little bit of discomfort in your life, even a little bit of discomfort in your life. You know, it's okay to be uncomfortable. Just so long as God's comfortable. That's the person that should be comfortable. Whether you when you get to heaven, you'll have all the comfort you you could ever want. So, while you're down here, you live for his pleasure. You live for his comfort. But you need to know, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you just as much. Coming from this word and from this ministry. Jesus loves you just as much. If I put my hand and say, there, there, now, God knows you can't live a holy life. But he loves you. And you understand that though you can't get the victory over your sin, when you die, you have victory then. When you die. So death is the only way you can get victory? Yes, it is. It's the only way you can get victory is death. But you to experience that death, not when you die physically, you to experience that death when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you embrace the cross and let it kill the old life so that the life that you now live, you live by faith power of the Son of God living in you and abiding in you. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you should ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Greater is he that lives within me than he that's in the world. We're not talking about doing it in our own strength. We're talking about doing it in the strength of God and God's love, Jesus Christ, Jesus only. However, if you're trying hard to be a good Christian, stop. Embrace the cross and let your life be over so that his resurrected life inside of you can come forth because that's the part that glorifies God and that's the life that the world needs to see Christians living in so you need to know that Jesus loves you because that's a fact that is unchangeable and you might not share all of my views you might not share none of my views but you need to know it's no different I can tell you that Jesus loves you after saying some of the challenging things I have said in these videos but you need to know that he does love you maybe you felt he loves you because some pastor put his hands on you, some minister put his hands on you, and you're going to sin every day, but God loves you. Well, let me say this. You need to repent for living below the life God's called you, and he loves you very much, and is calling you to live in a way that honors him. Because he loves you, he's telling you to turn from your sin and trust him fully. That is just as much love coming out of me to tell you that. As any pastor in the sinning Christian camp telling you, you got to put up with your sin. And the only deliverance you got is when you die. And when you die as an old man or die whenever you die, that's the only time you're going to be free. I hope you understand that I don't love any less than that pastor telling you that. I love just as much. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is going to give you victory over sin. Will you fall? Yeah, I have. I've fallen a lot. But let me tell you something. I don't need to fall like I used to. Because I'm finding out that the more I die, the more he lives. The less of me, the more it is of him. 
and I tell you, I'm coming to the conclusion that I might as well just go ahead and get it all over with so that he can have everything. That was the original, the original revelation of the cross. We die to ourselves so that resurrected life, the resurrected life of Jesus is free. Paul said, I die daily. Praise God. More death to me, the big me, more life to the big God. Hallelujah. More death to me, Mr. Important, more life to the one that's really important. Hallelujah. So in other words, let's embrace the cross. The cross is still active. It's not, oh, Jesus died on the cross one time and that's all they did. No, the cross is still active. Anybody who comes to Christ and anybody that wants to live a sanctified life has to embrace that cross. That's what baptism represents. Baptism represents you going down into the water Dying to the old life. This is this is what believers' baptism is all about. You being baptized, you're going down under the water, saying that you are dead. It's a watery grave. And you go under there, dead. You come up out of that water, resurrected, a new life. That is the theme lost from baptism. You know, baptism for the most part is just a ritual. People forget what it means. It represents that you're going down into the water, a dead man, dead to the old life. You're coming up out of that water, brand new, circumcised of heart. The water baptism is an outward display of an inward spiritual phenomenon. And so we forget that that's the truth behind baptism. But who cares? When you're preaching the sinning Christian, you can be baptized all you want. You're going to live in sin anyway. I don't care how many times you're baptized. Because <laughs> nobody can live victoriously over sin, you know. Besides, the Bible says, uh, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and his, his word is not in us. Well, that's a lie. You go back and read that first chapter of John and watch John draw in his parallels. Okay, see how he's comparing the person that's saying if he's if you say that uh, I'm walking in the light when I'm walking in darkness, I'm lying. He's talking about two different individuals. There's the lying guy that says, I'm walking in the truth, but I'm not. That person, when he says he has no sin, he deceives himself and the truth is not it. It's that person. But the person that's walking in the light does not do that. He lives in God. But if that person walking in the light were to sin, he has an advocate. Of the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, which is what it says in chapter 2. So go back and read that chapter. I want to close out this video series because I know I'm repeating myself now. But I just felt really led to keep emphasizing this. Now I want you to know that my messages don't change a whole lot. Because I'm called to preach a specific set of things. I'm asking everybody. I'm asking everybody to examine what you really believe about the gospel. Surrender and submission to the cross of Christ is what has to happen. We have to submit afresh to the cross of Christ. It's the only way to end the Casper Milk Toast gospel that's going on. If our life will cease, the old trying hard life, the old religious I'm trying the best I can, or it says in the old Star Trek, I'm doing the best I can, Captain. Okay, huh, no, okay. Doing the best you can, but that's not faith. All right, that's not faith. Sorry about the little stuff right But anyway, I'm saying to you, let's go ahead and die to that old life and give God the ability to show forth his resurrected life and love and power. This is Brother Kevin saying to you that Jesus loves you. And if you've been away from God, I want you to know this is your day. You come on back home. God loves you. You've been away for a long time and you've been living out of fellowship with God. He's calling you home. You're looking at a man that has failed God so miserably. But Jesus called me home. He even sent me a holiness pastor for 12 years to command me to repent. And he didn't mind wasting that man's time. I'm telling you, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. But he's not going to lie to you. 
He's not going to say to you, you're going to live in sin. He's going to say to you, if you trust me and trust in my cross, you're going to live a brand new life. He's going to tell you the truth. All right. Well, praise his holy name. Jesus does love you and I love you. And I hope to see you again in a video. And I hope that you would go to my website, uh, my YouTube site, I should say, uh, Reformation and Revival Now. And my wife will be doing some videos on there as well. So please stay tuned. Uh, my wife is very, very uh, experienced with uh, uh, youth and children's ministry, and she has uh, some really good nuggets for you. So anyway, God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.